Zhu Yuanzhang, the founder of China's Ming Dynasty, died in 1398. The news soon reached the former Yuan Dynasty capital of Beiping. The Prince of Yan, Zhu Di, led his well-prepared army south started the Jingnan Rebellion. Four years later, his troops stormed the Ming capital of Nanjing, and he seized the throne from his nephew, Emperor Tianwen. Many in Nanjing, including the previous emperor's ministers, denounced the seizing of the throne and were unwelcoming of Zhu Di. He longed for his familiar home of Beiping, where he had lived as the Prince of Yan. When the Mongols had taken the city in the 13th century, they had rebuilt it in conformity with Han custom. Everything was built in accordance with designs prescribed in an ancient building code out of respect for Confucianism. In secret, Zhu Di sent Feng Shui master Jiang Tong Zheng to Beiping to draw plans for a new temple built in conformity with ancient geomantic principles. Zheng embarked on an ambitious architectural project. Within months, the plans were completed. The new structure would lie to the southeast of Beiping. According to the principles of yin and yang, the south was considered sacred. It was the direction of heaven. As part of the emperor's secret project, the foundations were laid in the suburbs to the south of Beiping. Kuai Xiang, the assistant minister of engineering and a trained master carpenter, was appointed to oversee the work. This magnificent new complex was to become the Temple of Heaven. Its grounds cover an area of 273 hectares. Two circular walls divide the grounds into an inner and outer part. Most of the buildings are contained in the inner enclosure. Two circular walls divide the grounds into an inner and outer part. This majestic building was the imperial vault of heaven, a place which housed shrines to the gods and the emperor's ancestors. As its name suggests, this hall was used to perform the most important ceremony of the year, when the emperor prayed for good harvests. This place, also called the Second Forbidden City, was where the emperor bathed and ate a diet without meat for three days prior to performing a ceremony. This is an acoustic masterpiece famous throughout the world. The stone slabs are supposed to produce echoes if you made a big sound while standing on them. These are the legendary seven star stones. After its completion, the temple complex underwent several renovations. It proudly displays the best architectural accomplishments of the Ming and Qing dynasties. At the time, no other building in the world dedicated to the worship of heaven was larger than this. The complex today, however, is not the original. Built over a period of 14 years during the early Ming dynasty, and which was called the Temple of Heaven and Earth. It remains unknown why Kuai Sheng built a temple so completely different to any other existing at that time.
it's hard to imagine what the main structure looked like as designed by Kwai Shan because there's no graphic description of it in any of the existing archives. The scant information available revealed that it comprised a yellow tiled square hall with marble steps and a double eaved roof of diagonal ridges. This building, close to the western gate of today's Temple of Heaven, preserves the original design dating back to the Yongle reign of the early 15th century. This has helped to form an idea of how the main hall would have looked. It may have been used more as a residence than purely a temple for religious worship, which may explain the reason for its repeated restoration. In the past, people prayed for good harvests and were in awe of natural phenomena, such as thunder or lightning, as in many other countries across the world. They worshiped the God of heaven in the hope of attracting blessings. Ancient records trace formal ceremonies in honor of the God of heaven and earth back to the Xia dynasty when China was still a slave-based society. In Imperial China, the emperor was regarded as the son of heaven. As heaven was the source of his authority, it was important to offer tokens of gratitude to the gods if he wanted his kingdom to be secure. But Zhu Di's accession to the throne had not been by peaceful means. He had attained it by killing Emperor Jian Wen. It caused much uneasiness among the population. Aware of this, Zhu Di wanted to prove his legitimacy as emperor by performing a ceremony in worship of the God of Heaven. By this time, Beiping had changed its name to Beijing. Zhu Di wanted his own personal fiefdom to have a temple of heaven and earth. He himself presided over a ceremony of heavenly worship, the grandest ever seen. After performing the ceremony, Zhu Di was satisfied he had heaven's approval. His authority was accepted and his instructions faithfully followed. In the year 1421, he realized his greatest wish to move the Ming capital to Beijing. After the city of Beijing became the capital, the temple of heaven and earth seemed wanting in scale. From the vestiges left at the time, it appears more likely to have been a place for living in rather than a temple for worshiping the gods. Its square shape in the final analysis was the cause of its ill fate. In 1521, 15-year-old Zhu Hotsong, son of Prince Xing Xian, was summoned to Beijing from central China's Hubei. He was to become Ming Emperor Jia Jing. He was not content with the square design of the main hall in the Temple of Heaven, where he was to be enthroned he instructed his ministers to alter it several times. In 1530, on Emperor Jia Jing's instructions, Xia Yan built a circular altar south of the original main hall. The name of the temple was also changed from the Temple of Heaven and Earth to the Temple of Heaven. In a memorial to Emperor Jia Jing, Xia Yan wrote, in the early years of the Western Zhou, Duke of Zhou, 
had appointed the winter solstice as the day of worship to the God of heaven at the circular mound altar. And the term circular mound altar is still used to this day. Xia Yan cited ancient books to support his design. The form and size of the circular mound altar, he said, had to conform to the design prescribed in the Book of Changes. The building was to contain the secrets of the universe. Emperor Jia Jing agreed, but he had something different in mind. Measuring 27 meters in diameter at its summit, the altar radiated out from its center in nine concentric circles. The stone slabs, which make up each subsequent circular level, increase in number by a factor of nine. These descended to a further three levels built of the finest quality pale gray marble. This structure was used as the foundation of many buildings of that period. This type of open-air altar is unique to Chinese architecture. It differs from the temples of Europe. It seeks to convey the mystery of the universe and its part in it instead of creating an imposing sense of power with awe-inspiring sculptures of gods. Standing here, one gets a sense of harmony between man, heaven, and earth. There is evidence in the design of efforts to create a sense of mystery of the cosmos. At each of the four cardinal directions of the enclosing walls, stand stone ornamental gateways. Tumbling clouds are carved into their lintels, symbolizing entry into the realm of heaven. Each gateway had a name. Their names, if put together, represented a sequence of ideas contained in the Book of Changes. The East Gate represent all forms of life on Earth, which the God of Heaven and Earth treats with impartiality. The main South Gate represent their luxuriant growth. The West Gate represents the harmony of yin and yang. And finally, the north gate represents the balance of yin and yang. Around the altar were two walls, the inner circular and the outer square. The circle represented the vault of heaven, while the square represented the vast earth. To the ancients, the vast universe, which they called heaven, was an enclosed vault above the earth, which held all living things. This belief in heaven and earth symbolized the philosophy of living in harmony with nature and of man and heaven forming a unified whole. This round altar of white marble was where hundreds of ceremonies were performed by the emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties. It was a place where the emperor communicated with the God of heaven.
Temple of Heaven could boast acoustic. The original Vault of Heaven was built by Emperor Jia Jing in 1530. It houses shrouds to the God of Heaven and to the Emperor's ancestors. Everything inside it has a circular design, radiating out from the apex of the ceiling. Glazed green roof tiles rise to a golden pinnacle guiding the human gaze toward heaven. The structure is made of brick and wood, with 16 pillars to support it. A system of gilded bracket locks creates an intricate spiderweb-shaped ceiling structure. The vault people see today is the work of a famous family of architects of the Qing Dynasty, the Lei family. The structure of the ceiling is unique among all of China's ancient buildings. The ornate designs depict mythical dragons and phoenixes. The whole ceiling resembles a huge web of gold and sapphire with a golden dragon, the symbol of the emperor at its heart. This bridge was also commissioned by Emperor Jia Jing. It was built wide enough to accommodate three flagstone paths. The central path was reserved for use by the gods. The eastern path was used by the emperor, and the western path was used by lords, princes, and ministers. After the completion of the circular mound altar, the ceremony and worship of heaven was no longer held at the original hall, but Emperor Jia Jing still wasn't satisfied. In 1540, he ordered the original square hall to be pulled down to make way for a circular hall, which would be named Da Xiang. The purpose of this building was to symbolize the vast vault of the universe. The hall of Da Xiang was a circular wooden structure featuring triple eaves and a pyramidal roof. It was the predecessor of the present day hall of prayer for good harvests. Before Da Xiang Hall was completed, a Taoist priest advised Emperor Jia Jing that the empty space to the southeast of the hall was not propitious for the consolidation of his kingdom. An ornamental rockery was arranged there to fill the void. As a pious Taoist believer, Emperor Jia Jing had the seven star stones formation placed inside the Temple of Heaven. So what was the significance of the number seven? Why not have four, six, or eight? The ancients worshiped the God of heaven and the God of earth. The first documented ceremony and worship of the God of earth took place on Mount Tai, was performed by China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Emperors of later dynasties would follow such a ritual. They traveled the long distance at huge expense to Mount Tai. From the reign of Emperor Zhen Zong, of the Song Dynasty, the practice ceased. Instead, the ceremony was held at a temple built closer to the capital. The seven star stones represent the seven peaks of Mount Tai. Together, they are a miniature of Mount Tai and a symbol of the tradition of worshiping heaven. However, one will find eight stones there today, not seven. The smallest one is said to have been added by Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty.
Emperor Qianlong ruled the country in accordance with Confucian principles. The Manchu government, he hoped, would be accepted as part of the wider Chinese family. So he placed a rock, a symbol of the Manchu people, next to the seven star stones. The Temple of Heaven underwent another restoration in 1751, when the old tiles of the Hall of Da Xiang were changed from pale green on top, yellow in the middle, and green below to cyan colored stones. After its renovation, the Lei family of architects oversaw the building of the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvests, turning it into a masterpiece of architecture. Instead of cross beams, wooden pillars and bracket locks were used to support the huge roof. The 28 pillars symbolize the seasons, seasonal division points, and constellations. Only when wind and rain came on time was a good harvest possible. As the intermediary between man and God, the emperor interacted with heaven for the benefit of his people. For the ancients, the emperor's role of communicating with the God of heaven was sacred. In 1889, the hall was struck by a bolt of lightning and caught fire. The fragrant smell of the burning eaglewood pillars traveled for miles out across the surrounding areas. The next year, Emperor Guangxu had the hall rebuilt. During his 60-year reign, Emperor Qianlong performed 59 ceremonies here. They were among the most spectacular ever performed. Besides the restoration work on the building, Emperor Qianlong instructed Prince Zhuang to have drawings of the sacrificial vessels to be used in the ceremony. The document, completed in 1759, formed an important part of the Qing archives. The Qing dynasty was at its prime Chinese society was undergoing great change, and the Manchu and Han cultures were merging. Manchu ceremonies came to incorporate many Confucian ideas. Of all the ceremonies, the ceremony of worship to the God of Heaven was the most important. In accordance with Qing law, it was held on the winter solstice each year because it was believed to be the seasonal turning point. Before the ceremony, the emperor remained in the hall of abstinence for three days where he bathed and ate a purely vegetarian diet. On the day of winter solstice, at around a quarter past four in the morning, the bell inside the hall began to toll. This marked the beginning of the ceremony. The bell inside the tower today is the same one made during the Yongle reign of the Ming dynasty. In the Qing dynasty, three major ceremonies are held each year in the spring, summer, and winter, and they lasted for more than a hundred years. The ceremony reached its zenith during the Qianlong reign. As the best preserved ancient Chinese site designed for the purpose of worship, the Temple of Heaven is a place that creates a sacred sense of mystery of life and the universe. Wood is the main material used in its structures, 
which adds to the overall impression of simplicity and harmony. The design, construction and landscaping of the temple are symbolic of the dialogue between man and heaven. Every detail has been crafted in honor of heaven. Today, the ceremonies of worship are a thing of the past, but people can still get a sense of the religious rites that were once performed here. The Temple of Heaven is one of the world's most precious legacies handed down to us through the ages.